New Feet just released their very first custom keyboard. And in this video, I'm gonna take a look, but here's the thing. I'm a fresh certified custom keyboard virgin. And if you're on the verge of buying or building your very first custom keyboard, come on, let's jump in together. Contrary to popular opinion and my YouTube feed, I am not a massive keyboard nerd. I don't know what lubing is. Well. I do, but I don't ever do it with keyboards. I haven't a clue about what all the different kind of switches mean or represent beyond the classic linear, bumpy, or clicky options. And the last time I saw this much foam, I was on my first overseas holiday in Ibiza, and I nearly drowned. In this video, I'm gonna be building and tweaking my very first custom keyboard and sharing all the stuff I've learned about this nerdy little hobby along the way. And if you're thinking about jumping down that particular rabbit hole, I reckon there are broadly three things you should know before you get started. Firstly, let's talk about the biggest difference between a custom keyboard and a regular, good quality off the shelf keyboard like this one. This is the new Feet S75 version two, by the way. I reviewed it last year and it performs really well as an all rounder. And here is new Feet's first custom keyboard, the Gem 18. You're probably thinking, well, why would I buy this that I've got to build myself when I could just go and buy this instead? Well, the answer probably depends on how fussy you are. For me, it's all a bit like dating. Stay with me here. So first of all, Cast your mind back to when you were a total newbie to the dating scene. Maybe you started going on a few dates, maybe you met some nice people, you started to get a feel for what and who you're into, and also what you're really not into. And both of those things are a really important part of the process in terms of deciding who you might ultimately spend a big part of your life with. Now, it might be that you go on your first date and you end up meeting the love of your life and you realize that they're the perfect person for you and there's absolutely nothing you want to change about them ever. In which case, good for you. Stop this video and go and get yourself one of these instead. What I think happens in a lot of cases, if people are being really honest, is that if you're lucky, you might eventually end up in a relationship where the foundation is solid, but deep down, you know there are a few things that could be a little bit better. Little insight into my marriage there. This is your custom keyboard type of relationship. You basically enter into it knowing that you're probably gonna be tinkering and adjusting for years. And that's okay, as long as you're prepared to jump down that rabbit hole together. Let's take the Gem 80 for instance. The amount of customization is unlike anything I've ever seen on a regular consumer keyboard. It ships bare bones, which means you get the foundations of your keyboard all assembled and ready to go. You just then need to install switches and keycaps. You can swap out the switches, of course. This one landed with these purple ones on, but I got a whole pack of these lemon switches and I used the included switch and cap puller to swap out and replace everything. This is how it sounded before I did. And then afterwards. Nufi have collaborated with Gatoron to produce a completely new line of switches for this release. There's Mint, which is a super light linear switch, Raspberry, which is also linear, but requires a bit more force and has less travel, and then Lemon, which is a tactile or bumpy switch with even more force required. All of these will give you a slightly different level of tactility depending on how you like your keys to feel. Now, if you don't fancy these, there are a ton of others to choose from too. And of course you can mix and match. So if you want the letter keys to be one style, but the shift key to have a bit more of a bump to it, that's totally up to you. In terms of the foundation for my custom keyboard relationship, I went for this Cosmic Mocha color to tie in with all my desk accessories. And I'm super happy with the quality of the frame, the weight, and these coffee and cream retro colors. There are plenty of others to choose from, including some that are a bit more futuristic, but let's say I didn't much like these retro double shot PBT keycaps, I can easily swap them out for another set. Newfie have made a bunch of keycap sets to go with each of the Gem 80 color themes, but there are a million and one different keycap sets that you can pick up for this classic 80% 10 keyless layout. And that is classic keyboard nerd lingo for a keyboard that's not got a number pad. See, I've learned all sorts this week. In terms of further customization, you can go into software like Via and then start swapping around the way the keys work. It's as easy as connecting a cable, loading the software, and then dragging and dropping the keys with the commands that you want. This is a feature that's also starting to be present on a lot of non-custom keyboards now too, which is great. But we can go further. If I flip this over, remove the screws, and then start taking this to pieces, we can begin playing with what's going on on the inside. In here, you'll find a bunch of sound dampening materials, including 
including three layers of foam and a silicon poured base. You can actually add more to this if you like more or less bounce in your keyboard or even change the acoustics by adding a different kind of plate material such as aluminium, polycarbonate or POM or adding different types of gasket like strips beads or more. It's a bit like having a custom performance car but with this one you get everything you need to tweak exactly how it feels and sounds without needing to buy an entirely new vehicle every time you want to make a change. On to my second big thing. Now I've discovered that there's a kind of holy trinity when it comes to custom keyboards that I hadn't really thought about until testing out this one. But before we go into what makes up this trinity we need to talk about Dockiness. Now, any self-respecting keyboard nerd, which is not me by the way, seems to be in search of the perfect thock. Now there is quite a lot of debate over what thockiness really means, but simply put, thock is a sound. It's a deep, rich, muted sound signature that's found in certain mechanical keyboards. Now if you're into ASMR, it's probably the sort of thing that will light you up if you want to listen to it for long stretches of time. And when you've heard it, I can fully understand why some people go chasing it. If you want to try building a keyboard that sounds thocky, you're going to be wanting to consider three key variables. This is the trinity I was talking about. There are more, of course, but let's start with three. Volume, pitch, and depth. Now, each of these different elements can be controlled by using different types of switches, keycaps, and materials on the inside. And it's a bit like fine tuning a piano. You can add a new switch here. Oh, that sounds quite nice. You can add a gasket pad there. It's even nicer. Let's try a metal plate instead of a plastic one. Yeah, not sure about that. Let's try something else. If we take the space bar as a single example, Newfie have added these extra silicon pieces here, which they call their ghost bar. The idea is that it should sound like all the other switches rather than hollow and rattly like some of the space bars do. Now with everything on, it sounds like this. Now you might not be able to tell the difference, but trust me, it feels really different. And you can do this with all aspects of this keyboard. Now if you're a bit of an experimenter by nature, I can totally see why A, people get lost in finding the perfect combination of keys, switches and more, and B, why people describe this as a hobby. You could concoct a kind of sonic recipe that gives you your perfect volume, pitch and depth that pleases you most, and then spend months maybe years refining that recipe. Now, I'm just beginning to understand why people can and do become obsessive about this. The third and final thing I wanna share about my adventures into custom keyboards is that if you take the red pill and go down the rabbit hole, this hobby can get really expensive really quickly. Now, I went over to Mo Design's page to check out their Sonic keyboard, and this was genuinely like building a custom car. You can pick out pretty much anything. And just like a high-end car, what started as a base price $299 product quickly racked up to more than $600 for a keyboard that will arrive and I will need to build myself. You can go much, much higher than that too if you're a serious custom keyboard enthusiast. I saw this video the other day about a $3,500 custom keyboard. It's making me think that custom keyboards are the typing equivalent of the sort of person who whips out a Mont Blanc pen in a meeting. It can fundamentally do the same thing as a 50 cent biro, but the premium build and feel and prestige makes a statement, both to the people that see it and to the person using it. Now, thankfully, if you're in off the shelf keyboard territory right now and you want to level up your keyboard game, maybe you want to dip a toe in the water with custom boards, the Gem 80 isn't anywhere near that expensive. This one I've been using in today's video starts at $149, but if you add on the connectivity options, switches, themed keycaps, matching wrist rest, you'll be looking at just over $200. It's not too bad if like me, you're kind of building your collection, still experimenting with your taste, but don't want to get into crazy custom keyboard pricing territory just yet. It feels like they've made a keyboard specifically for people who are custom curious and they kind of know they'll need a bit of hand-holding when they're taking the plunge for the first time. Just in case you're wondering, by the way, New Feet aren't sponsoring this video, but they did send me this keyboard to try out ahead of the pre-order, and the link in the description is affiliated, so if you fancy picking up one of these for yourself and you do want to support the channel, head in via the link below and use my code and get yourself a sweet, sweet 10% discount on this or anything else in their store. Enjoy. Folks, if you've got any questions about this one, you know what to do. Maybe you're an experienced custom keyboard person and you've got some suggestions for me as a relative amateur to improve my experience. If so, 
great. Let me know all your favorite modifications down in the comments and maybe I'll make a follow-up. Or perhaps there are some other big things that anyone who wants to get into custom keyboards needs to know that I've not covered here. Drop a comment below and let us know. And in the meantime, if you don't feel like building your own keyboard after watching this, you might want to check out my head-to-head to, -head to head of the three best off-the-shelf 75% low-profile keyboards I've tried lately. And I promise, I'm not really a keyboard guy. See you next time.